Welcome to Electron Online. Before we calculate the energy content in the Venus or Venusian, Venusian? Okay. I don't know. Try again. All right. Welcome to Electron Online. In order to calculate the total heat content in the atmosphere of Venus, we need to understand a few more things. In the previous video, we were able to calculate the heat content in one cubic meter of atmosphere on the surface of Venus, but there we know the pressure, we know the temperature, and we know the heat capacity of the atmosphere at that location. But of course that changes as you go higher up in the atmosphere, things change. The pressure changes, it becomes less as you go up, the temperature changes, it gets colder as you go up, at least less hot when we talk about Venus, and the amount of heat that the atmosphere can contain, the heat capacity, changes as well. Now on the Earth we don't need to worry about all those various things, especially the heat capacity of the air, because there the heat capacity of the atmosphere on the Earth follows very closely the standard theoretical values. For a monatomic molecule, the heat capacity called C sub V is 3 halves R, which equates to about 12 and a half joules per mole of atmosphere. For a diatomic molecule, which is typically for the Earth, because most of the Earth's atmosphere is either oxygen or nitrogen, which is a diatomic molecule, the heat capacity is 20.8 joules per mole, 5 over 2 times the gas constant, and for a triatomic molecule such as carbon dioxide or water vapor, the heat capacity is 7 over 2 R, which is about 29.1 joules per mole. And at those standard temperatures and pressures that we find on the Earth's atmosphere, they follow pretty close to those numbers. But on Venus, that's not the case. So see what happens. First of all, let's say a temperature of 38 degrees centigrade, which is a little bit warmer than we'd find on the Earth typically, on the various pressures, notice as the pressure increases, like it does in the atmosphere of Venus, the heat capacity becomes much, much larger. So this is per mole, so it doesn't matter that it's more dense, because that's taken into account. It's simply that for every mole of gas, there's a lot more heat that can be contained within that mole. So you can see that at 92 atmospheres on the surface, the C sub V reaches 150, degree, 150 joules per mole, but that's at a temperature of 38 degrees centigrade. We know that it's a whole lot warmer on the surface of Venus, so here when it's at 400 degrees centigrade, which is almost the temperature of Venus, at the surface of Venus, notice the numbers are even larger. Also notice that at the typical temperature of 38 degrees for one atmosphere, which is what we find on the Earth, the number matches very closely the, to the theoretical value. But on Venus, if it was very hot, even if it had the same pressure as the Earth, you could see that the heat capacity would already be warmer simply or higher simply because it is warmer. And put the two together, well, you talk about some very big values compared to the standard heat capacity of the gas. So that's another reason why it is so hot on Venus, because the, the atmosphere can contain an enormous amount of heat, and because of that, it acts like a very warm blanket around the surface. There's, of course, other things that we'll consider. We'll explain those one by one as we go through the very interesting part of the atmosphere of Venus. So, please, now we understand the heat capacity. Now we can go back and try to calculate the heat content in a column of atmosphere, let's say we have an area of one square meter, and we take that all the way up to the top of the atmosphere, we're going to divide into little slices, because as you go up higher, of course, the temperature changes, the pressure changes, so we're going to take the average pressure and temperature for different regions in the atmosphere, and then add it all up to see what the energy content will be in a column of atmosphere, and then, of course, we're going to multiply that times the entire surface of Venus to figure out how much energy is contained within the entire atmosphere of Venus to give us kind of a feel of what it's like on that planet. So that's how we're going to do that. 